Let's look at this recurrence. T of n is twice of T of the square root of n plus log n. Now this is a different kind of a recurrence from what we've seen so far because a problem of size n is not broken down into problems of size n by b or some fraction of n. Rather it's broken down into a problem of size the square root of n or two problems of size square root of n. So one way to solve such recurrences is to assume that n is equal to 2 to the power n. What this will achieve is that we can write t of n as t of 2 to the power n and the right hand side becomes twice of t of the square root of n is n to the power 1 by 2. So if n is 2 to the power n, n to the power 1 by 2 will be 2 to the power n by 2. So this then becomes 2 to the power n by 2, t of 2 to the power n by 2 plus log n. Now if n is 2 to the power n, then log n is going to be equal to n. So this will be equal to n. Now in this form, the recurrence is closer to the sort of recurrences that we've been solving. In particular, if we treat this as some function s of m, then this becomes s of m by 2. So this recurrence is really s of m is twice of s of m by 2 plus m. Now this recurrence has already been solved earlier. We know that the solution to this recurrence is s of m is theta of m log m because this is the merge sort recurrence where a problem of size n is broken down into two problems of size n by 2 and one needs time equal to or proportional to n to combine the solutions to the two subproblems. So s of m is theta of m log m. This is the solution as discussed earlier to such recurrences. Alternately, if you, if you don't remember the solution by heart, you can use master theorem to quickly solve for this recurrence. And this is going to be the solution. This will be a case of n to the power log base b of a being equal to f of n because you'll get n to the power log of 2 to the base 2 and you need to compare that with n. So if s of m is this because s of m was t of 2 to the power n this means t of 2 to the power n is theta of m log m. Now t of 2 to the power m in turn was nothing but t of n. So if you just substitute n for 2 to the power m, we'll get t of n is theta of m times log m. Now if 2 to the power m is n, then we know that m is log of n. So we can write this m as log of n. And we can write this m as also log of n, in which case this will become log of log of n. So this is the solution to the original recurrence. The original recurrence was not directly solvable, at least not according to uh, not using the techniques that we have discussed. So what we did was we did a change of variables by substituting 
n by substituting 2 to the power m for n we were able to make this argument a function of m and this would become a function of m of course but this would particularly become 2 to the power m by 2 if we were to replace n by 2 to the power m and then this allows us to transform this recurrence into something very family. Let's take one more example of this. Suppose you have the occurrence P of n is 3 times P of the square root of n plus log n. What do we do in this case? We do the same thing. Let n be 2 to the power n. This means P of 2 to the power n is 3 times P of 2 to the power m by 2 plus log n and log n here is going to be equal to n. So this becomes n. Now again we make this s of n. So this will become s of m by 2. If s of n is t to p of 2 to the power n, s of m by 2 is p of 2 to the power m by 2. So the recurrence becomes s of n is 3 times s of m by 2 plus m. And what's the solution to this recurrence? Well, we can use master theorem. a is 3, b is 2. And f of m here is m. So if we take m to the power log base b of a, we get m to the power log base 2 of 3. And if we compare m to the power log base b of a with f of m, we can see that the power of m here which is log base 2 of 3 is greater than 1 because log base 2 of 2 is 1 so log base 2 of 3 will be greater than 1. That means we are in case 1 of master theorem because this function is polynomially larger than this function. So by case 1 of master theorem we can say that s of m is theta of m to the power log base 2 of 3. Now if we go back and substitute p of 2 to the power m in place of s of m, we we'll get p of 2 to the power m is theta of m to the power log base 2 of 3. And p of 2 to the power n is p of n. Because we substituted n by 2 to the power n. So p of n then becomes theta of m to the power log base 2 of 3. Now if m is if, if m is equal to log n what will m to the power 2 of sorry, m to the power log base 2 of 3 be? m to the power log base 2 of 3. So I write it like this. m to the power, let's call it just log 3 because base 2 is understood, will be log of n to the power log base 2 of 3. So this means that p of n is theta of log of n raised to the power log base 2 of 3, which we can write as so this is log of n, the whole thing raised to the power log base 2 of 3. Right, we are assuming here that this notation is equivalent to taking log n and raising it to the k power. So we are taking log n here and raising it to the power log base 2 of 3. So this is the solution to this recurrence, again obtained by a change of variables. 
So when you see a square root of n on the right hand side, this is one strategy you can try by making n equal to 2 to the power m so that this will become 2 to the power m by 2 and then one can transform this into a recurrence that can be directly tackled using some of the techniques that we have discussed.